Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, hi, my name is Kayla Salenza. If you're not, welcome back. If you're not new, you definitely know who this guy is. This is Kobe. Say hi, baby. <laughs> he's so cute. He's like really tired right now, so he is just like so chill. If you're unfamiliar, Kobe is my F1B mini golden doodle. We have a whole series on him. I will link the playlist up above. Go check out those videos before you watch this one. He really needs a haircut. Like, <laughs> oh yeah, you're tired. You're tired. Okay, go sleep. So like I was saying, we have a whole series. He's literally going to his crate right now, I think. He doesn't know what to do. He's like, I want to sleep, but I also want to be with my mom. Or he's actually going to his dad in the other room. Okay. Like I was saying, I have a playlist of a bunch of videos. I think there's like three or four of them right now. And they're literally vlogs all about Kobe. So when we first got him, some training tips, like pup dates. We have a 12-week pup date video. We have a 16-week pup date video. There's also a 20-week pup date video coming up. But I get a lot of questions about Kobe. Like when I say a lot, I mean a lot. Like so many questions in the comments of the videos people replying to my stories on Instagram people literally are starting to follow me on Instagram just because of Kobe and they're DMing me asking me questions so I'm getting a lot of them so I asked you guys on YouTube on my community tab I posted a little picture of Kobe and I said let me know questions I'm gonna answer them for you as well I pulled it on my Instagram and I got a lot of them a lot of them were repeating questions or tie in together so I'm gonna try and cover them all as best as I can I hope this video is not going to be too long so let's just jump into it we're going to start really simple a lot of questions i got were what breed is he how big will he get what percentage poodle and retriever is he is he a mini regular or tiny f1b mini golden doodle how big will he be versus how big he is now etc so i had a lot of questions kind of generally around that so i kind of wanted to touch on that first kobe is an f1b mini golden doodle now i'm going to break it down a little bit quickly because there is a little bit of confusion about golden doodles because there's kind of different categories and subcategories and it's a bit confusing so basically to break it down a golden doodle is made up of a golden retriever and a poodle so when they bred they have an f1 golden doodle kobe is an f1b mini golden doodle so that means his mom was an f1 golden doodle so she was a product of what i just mentioned a golden retriever and a poodle she bred with a mini poodle so his dad is a mini poodle and they had him which is an f1b mini golden doodle so if we kind of want to break the percentage down a golden doodle would be 50% golden retriever 50% poodle but since Kobe is the product of a golden doodle and a mini poodle he is actually 75% poodle 25% golden retriever so he gets more of the poodle features he is non-shedding basically hypoallergenic I'll talk about that a little bit more because that was a question and he is so intelligent like a poodle is golden retrievers are very intelligent also in terms of size they specifically say f1b mini golden doodles will be anywhere between 13 and 20 inches tall and a maximum of 30 pounds so specifically Kobe is probably gonna be somewhere around 15 to 16 inches tall he's gonna be kind of anywhere in between 20 and 30 pounds I know that's kind of a big difference 10 pounds but that was where the breeder told us he would kind of be sitting at personally I think he's gonna be anywhere between 20 and 25 pounds I literally weighed him right before this video he is currently sitting at 13.3 pounds and he is 19 weeks old he just turned 19 weeks so that's where he's sitting at right now so a lot of people want to know about the personality and the intelligence of an f1b mini golden doodle so this is kind of where I was saying in the first part where it ties in he is so smart like when I tell you he's so smart I'm not just saying it because he's my dog but he is so freaking smart he learns so quickly like we have so many tricks down pat we have him doing obviously sit but we have him doing paw we have him doing other paw we have him doing high fives we have him doing like stay and these tricks we've been doing with him for i would say at least a month now so around like anywhere between like 13 weeks old we started really like teaching him tricks i would say actually maybe even earlier maybe like 11 or 12 weeks we started teaching him tricks pretty fast and he was catching on we're actually starting to get into the motion where we're trying to teach him more like advanced tricks like we want to literally teach him chase your tail roll over that kind of stuff and just speaking about their personality and kobe's personality in particular 
well, the main thing I want to stress is how social they are. They are such social dogs. It is absolutely insane. When we take them for walks or like we live in a condo. So if we go in the elevator or the hallway and we see like our neighbors or other people, he just wants to meet everybody. He wants to say hi to them. He wants to be pet by them. He wants to jump on them. Sometimes it does get a little bit frustrating, but he is very young still. He is very excited. He wants to meet new people. For the most part, he listens to us. He sits if we tell him Kobe get down or Kobe stop relax anything like that he will do it but he is very social he loves being around us he likes being with us in bed he likes cuddling he watches TV with me on the couch it, he, they're very affectionate dogs which I feel like sometimes could be a tiny bit of a con just because I feel like I don't want him to develop like separation anxiety so we do at the same time try and distance ourselves just a little bit so sometimes if i go in another room i won't entice him all the time to be like kobe come with me or i won't say kobe let's go in bed or anything like that i'll kind of just leave him if he's like laying on the floor or if he's in his crate laying down or sleeping i'll just kind of leave him so that he can kind of learn that it's okay to be by himself as well we do try and leave him home when we can so if we're going grocery shopping if we're going to the gym whatever it may be we do try and leave him home just so that he can learn that he doesn't always need to be around somebody and that somebody will always be coming back for him and he'll be okay so two other questions that I got kind of tied in together one being how often do you brush him and the second being how often does he need a haircut and can you do it yourself so we brush Kobe I would say three to four times a week almost every other day that's just personal choice for us we love the way he looks when he's brushed he looks so stinking cute I will like insert a picture right here how he looks uh, it's just so fluffy and so much cuteness. I love it. I feel like when we first got him, we were brushing him less often, but now that he's 19 weeks old, he hasn't had a haircut yet. His hair is starting to get a lot longer, as you guys saw at the beginning, his face. So we're trying to brush him a lot more often now, just because we don't want to have any knots or have any issues or it bothering him. Since his hair is starting to get long, especially around his face, I don't really mind it around his body. It kind of looks the same to me, even though I know it is longer, but it's more so in his face around his eyes is starting to get really long and I don't I don't know if it's bothering him yet or not but I try and like brush it back or just a couple times a day I'll just like push it back so it's kind of out of his eyes when it comes to haircuts I think it's kind of personal preference how you like your dog to look I kind of don't mind what he looks like right now I kind of like the long hair obviously eventually he's gonna need a haircut for golden doodles they usually say anywhere between like five six seven eight months you should get a haircut but again it just depends on preference how you want them to look so again I will show you this is what his fur looks like right now he hasn't been brushed since uh, like a day and a half I think so I'm gonna be brushing him today but this is what his fur looks like and then you can see his face and his eyes I mean you can still see his eyes but you can probably tell what I mean where it's like starting to get really long like right here like I always go like this to him. <laughs> Next question, best part of having a golden doodle and that could ties into what I was just talking about is his hair. He's non-shedding, he's hypoallergenic. It's like, I tell you, I have literally never seen a hair anywhere like we got super lucky with him now this isn't true for all golden doodles it kind of ties down to how much retriever is in them because golden retrievers shed they have a lot more straight hair it's less curly less wavy Kobe's hair as you saw is a little bit more curly and a little bit more wavy my dad owns two golden labs and when I tell you the hair is a disaster at their house like my stepmom vacuums like three times a day it's insane this is the brush that we use to brush Kobe we just got this from a local pet store if you I don't know if they have PetSmart in the US or anywhere else in the world, but I live in Canada. PetSmart is like the big pet franchise around my area. So this is where we bought this brush. We got Kobe on October 29th, 2020. Today is Saturday, January 9th, 2020. And this is how much hair has come out of Kobe since we got him. Like I have not cleaned this brush. So you can see how much little hair comes out of him in three months. Like it's actually insane. The next question I got a lot of was, do you have recommendations on chewing toys? And yes, I freaking do. Kobe has so many toys. I swear it's like I have a little child living in my condo and running around. There's toys all over my floor. The first one I'll talk about is from the brand Chuck It. So it's these orange and blue colored toys. They probably sell this in whatever dog store, pet store is near you. You can also buy these on Amazon. I also do have an Amazon shop where I'll put all of the dog 
items that I use, so toys, the garbage bags, treats, whatever it may be that I buy from Amazon, that will be all in the description box below. So if you want anything specific that I'm talking about, you can go find it there. Just click the link and it will take you to it. These are really good because these are like hard chewing toys. So obviously a ball, this is really good. He likes playing with this. He kicks it around. He chases it. He doesn't really fetch it yet, but we're hoping that we can kind of get there with him. This ring is actually one of his favorites. I feel like dogs and puppies like this kind of toy because they can actually grab it since there's like a hole in the middle. And it's pretty hard. Like, I mean, you can push it in a tiny bit, but for the most part, it's really hard. So it's good for when they're teething and they just want to soothe the pain that they're kind of feeling when they're teething and their teeth are falling out and whatever it may be. As well, this is literally his favorite thing ever is this like little bone. This is bacon flavored and I'm telling Telling you he loves this so we just got him a new one just recently I think we gave this to him like two or three days ago and he has just been absolutely going at it I don't know if you guys can tell this is his go-to toy and kind of a question that goes with that is is he a biter and how you deal with the biting so my last video which was his 16 week update video I talked about this for literally like majority of the video I went into a lot of detail and I gave a lot of tips and tricks on what we're doing so I will link that up above go check out that video to answer that because I kind of don't want to go over it again because I talked about it in length like literally like I think eight minutes worth of the video I talked solely about that so go check that video out tips for when your puppy cries and begs while eating my first thing I'm gonna say is one don't even let it happen right from the beginning we did not allow Kobe anywhere near our table we let him know right off of day one that he was not allowed I would say for the most part he wasn't really interested in our food he still really isn't and I don't know if it's just his personality or if it's his breed in general we did have a couple of times where he would kind of walk around our table when my fiance and I were eating and we would tell him no right away we would say go to your bed go to your crate the table that we do eat on is fairly low so he would try and like jump up and we would just gently push him off the table and we would say no and he, we just kept doing that and he learned very quickly that that wasn't allowed I'm really a strong believer that your puppy behaves by the way that you the trainer lets them so if you allow them to do these things if you allow them to jump on your table if you allow them to be around you if you allow them to do anything that they shouldn't be doing if you allow them to do it once twice three times and then think when they do it the fourth time that they're not going to do it well you're wrong because you let them do it the one two three times you need to not allow them to do it right from the beginning so to go on that another thing is if you're sitting at the table and your puppy's there crying don't give them food because they're gonna learn okay i just have to cry and then they'll give me food i'm not saying don't ever feed them food i know me and my fiance sometimes we'll give him a piece of chicken or whatever it may be say you have made chicken for dinner and you want to give them chicken i wouldn't give them the chicken while you're sitting at the table I would put it in their bowl and then let them eat it from the bowl so that they learn that the bowl is where they eat they don't eat from the table you know what I mean I don't have too many tips or much advice on this because like I mentioned Kobe was really good about this he did not really give us a hard time whatsoever about eating at the table or eating like human food I don't know why but he's honestly just not really interested in it I don't know why I still haven't got through half of the questions and this video is getting quite long so I'm gonna do one more question and then I'm gonna film a part two for this just so that the video is not super 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 long so the next question I kind of wanted to to tackle was did you experience puppy blues and this is actually a really interesting question the answer is yes but the thing that makes it so interesting is that I didn't even know that this was a thing I know you hear of like baby blues so like mothers who just had newborns they experienced this type of thing I never even thought this was a thing with dogs until I actually got this question and I was thinking back on it and two times popped up in my head like almost immediately and I was like oh crap I think I actually did experience that basically what it means is it's like a depression or feeling of sadness after you get a puppy. They say puppy blues usually happens in first time pet owners, but it can happen to anybody who's just adopted a dog, rescued a dog, bought a dog, whatever it may be. At the time when I was experiencing it, I didn't think it was puppy blues because like I said, I didn't know that it was a thing. I knew it was a thing with newborn mothers and, and pregnancy, but I didn't know it was a thing with like pet owners. The two scenarios that come to mind, they were both the same situation and the same circumstance for me, but they just happened at two different times. The first time I experienced it was 
probably I would say like a week into getting Kobe it was pretty early on I remember him and I were laying down in bed and I just started like literally bawling my eyes out like literally crying and crying like hysterically crying I could not stop and my fiance was in the other room and I called him over and he was like holy crap like what the heck is wrong with you why are you crying and I just felt really sad I'm a huge realist I've gone through a lot of things in my life and I've been put in a lot of situations and circumstances that have made me very strong but also it, it twists my perspective on things so I was feeling super sad in that moment because I was thinking about losing Kobe and how I would feel and how much like he had changed my life already in such a short period of time. Kobe is like mine. Like I bought him with my own money. I stayed up late every single day. I'm the one training him. I'm the one potty training him. I'm walking him three, four, five times a day. You know, like I'm putting in the work and Honestly, it is like having a child like I know it's not necessarily the same because he didn't like come from my stomach or anything like that but it's me putting in my time my effort my love and I don't know why I just got super sad and I was just crying thinking about Kobe what am I gonna do when he's not here what are we gonna do when we lose him like I was just having kind of thoughts like that and I remember my fiance saying to me like Kayla we just got him we're gonna have him for 10 15 maybe even plus years like it's so far away and I couldn't just get over it. I was just super sad that day about it and I don't know why. And I did experience that a second time and honestly it was a couple of weeks ago I would say and I just again got sad and I started crying because I just love him so freaking much. I feel like I'm kind of okay now like I'm kind of surpassed and past that point but I just had like brief moments where I was experiencing it and just thinking about the future even though I know it's important to live in the moment. So I'm gonna end this video here. I'm gonna make a part two of this video where I'm gonna be talking about all of like the training. So crate training, potty training, especially potty training in a condo and apartment. That was a big question that I got and all of those things. So we're gonna be talking about that in the next video. So if you like this one make Make sure to subscribe to me down below give this a big thumbs up and don't forget to check out part two of the video i'll see you guys in that one